Last time on Frankie D. Crafter. I'm building a boat. If you haven't watched the episode, go do that right now. How to build a boat, part one. Now, on to phase two. Phase two! Welcome back to another episode of Frankie D. Crafter, where we last left off. We just need to glue some pieces together, specifically the sides, and then we can get into some details. Now, Another thing I'm doing right before I glue any of the pieces, I'm just fixing some things. Some of the issues I ran into for not measuring, but these are things that take about a second to fix, so don't worry too much about them. I'm just making sure that my pieces hit every spot I need them to hit for when I add the glue. Alright, take off that one side, only one side. Nah, you can take out both, I'm lying. Now when adding the plank textures on this one, you might actually want to measure this one just to make sure that the planks add up evenly up to the middle section. But you know me, I live on the edge. As you may have noticed, I'm not actually using a blade for this. I'm using a mechanical pencil. The reason why is because I don't actually want to cut into the foam. I don't want to weaken it. If I weaken it, I have to add another layer of something else or some support. And I don't want to do that. So this is why I'm doing it this way. When you're done with the first one, use it as your guide for the second one. You don't have to do any of the measurements. You just got to guide yourself in the right direction. I almost sound smart. Make sure to continue that same pattern on this piece too. This is where I do some final touches before I actually glue the sides to the boat. I want to make my guy look a little bit more fishy so I add some gills to it. As you can tell, I'm applying the hot glue into another piece and then I'm putting it on the foam. The white foam is weaker, I don't want to melt through it and I found that this is the only way I can do that. I will say though that my way is pretty difficult when it comes to these long pieces. So the smart thing to do is just use a different kind of glue and use pins. So PVA glue or tacky glue works fine as long as you pin it and you give it enough time to dry. With my way you also run into the problem of getting hot glue where you might not want it. I end up putting a little bit more attention to this part when I'm gluing the sides to the top part and I make sure that the glue is completely dried before I let it go. I realized that the first way I did it wasn't efficient enough. It worked on the first boat because the boat was smaller. But on this longer piece, I think I'm gonna have to risk melting the pink foam or the white foam. So I'd rather apply it to the pink foam first that can handle the heat a little bit better than the white one. And then I go and I glue the white one. The next part I'm going to show you how to build is this part right here. What is this? It's actually very important because this is a pirate ship. They're not like, I mean, they're not villains, but they're also not the nicest people. These aren't just meant to attack monsters. These are meant to attack other boats. The idea behind this part right here is that it'll hook on to whatever boat it smashes into and eventually 
you'll have the people actually walk to the other boat. The reason why this works is because this is so strong unless it's smashing into another thing that's built with the same material this will always break through if it has enough force pushing it behind it making it is super simple all you got to do is cut out a rectangle then you cut out the middle section make sure to have enough space in the middle to move the skewer and make sure to test it before you permanently glue it. You wanna make sure that all the angles are right for the right movement. I also went through the easy route on making the hooks. I just used scrap that I had, so I ended up using the foam board. There's probably better ways to do this out there, but this was just the easiest way for me at the moment. And you don't want to glue any of this yet, you want to paint it first. Now we need something to make the boat go super fast and I don't want to make this look like a pedal boat. We're gonna cut more pieces that kind of look like crystals, but they're actually gonna be the things that are gonna be spinning around to make the boat go faster. Maybe I should have looked up vocabulary for boats and this could have been a lot easier for you guys I'm sorry now be very careful on this one when it comes to pinning the cord is actually tougher a lot tougher so just be very careful on this section when working on the things that look like crystals you got to make sure that one side is flat and you have to make sure that all the flat faces are rotating towards the same direction. Got it? Cool. Just completely ignore the fact that I did it wrong. Alright, so now we're gonna start gluing a whole bunch of goodies to our ship. These are gonna be somewhat windows, and you know where I'm already getting these from. I mentioned it in a lot of episodes. These are like the tops to milks right before you open them to keep them fresh. We're gonna use them again. These things have done a lot for us actually. Don't forget to recycle. Don't forget to glue the Jolly Rogers. Remember, I'm not making sales. So this is how I'm handling them. And if you haven't seen the video before this one, go check it out. I don't remember where I got this from, but I'm using them. If you want to get down how to paint wood and wood textures, check out Jeremy's channel, Black Magic Craft. In there, he has a whole bunch of videos where he tackles how to paint wood. And he does an amazing job that I literally put on his videos every time I'm about to paint wood, just to make sure I have a basis for how I'm gonna paint my pieces. I don't follow his steps 100%, but following his steps, at least you have a footing to start with. Don't forget you're an artist too, so make sure to add your own flair to things. Make it yours. All right, time for more goodies. Remember when I said I had those tomato boxes? I have those tomato boxes. Well, we're putting them to use. Don't they look like scales? Don't we need scales? We need scales. All right then, cut them out, spray paint them as a primer, paint them the color you want, and then glue them on the ship. For the other blue detail, what I did is cut out a few pieces of cereal cardboard, and then I primered them up. I actually ended up spray painting the primer on and I ended up with a cool kind of design that I just painted over with my blue 
I really like the design, so instead of getting rid of it, I kind of try to highlight it again with some white. The thing about this is that you want to make this look the way you want to make it look. I showed you how to build the ship, you know? Oh, look at this guy. The point's not to copy me exactly 100%. The idea is for me to give you a base for the project you want to take on next. Then you kind of modify it the way you want it. The reason why I did the ship video in this way was because I wanted to make sure that you guys had the basis for the middle section. The second part, which I think is the most important part, and eventually I will do more videos on just the second part, is decorating the boat. All of this stuff, all of this, all of this, this fish stuff, just finding material. I wanna talk about one more thing though. I wanted to get this question out to the community. My question to the community is, I already know I want this to be powered by magic. I could do something simple. There's like a Lego piece. I can have that be the wheel here somewhere. But I don't know. I feel like I have a better idea, but not sure if it's just a better idea or if it's just me thinking it's a better idea. But I wanted to use one of these and put it here and have this actually be the way it's powered. And it's two people that can use a specific type of magic. And that's where they actually, that's where they both power the ship from. That's how they make it do their thing, you know what I'm saying? And I actually, I do like how it looks. It gives it some like magical sense, like it just makes it look more magical. Simply as that, you know? I wanna ask the community whether I should just build a little wheel thingy or if i should keep it with my original idea that's up to you guys you guys let me know thank you very much again for everything thank you very much again to my patreons without them i couldn't do this it's actually a lot about like the mentality behind it there's there's the idea of um someone willing to pay you for your art it, it just it it makes me come at this projects with a lot more heart. It makes me come at this projects with a lot more determination. And it makes me come at this projects with a lot more creativity. It feels like I have people that are pushing me to be better or to do good enough for them, you know? It's a big thing for me to think that somebody's willing to pay me a dollar or two a month just to see me craft something, it, it's, it's crazy. All right guys, I'll see you on the flippity side. Peace.